Welcome to today's episode, which is special in two ways. It is my first episode with an interview guest, and I'm interviewing a very special person, Caroline Moore, a good friend and an amazing coach. We are talking about energies and how important our emotional energy for healing and growth is. We discuss why it is so difficult to change and Caroline shares some great resources on how to overcome challenges and change your mindset and therefore your life. Caroline is a motivational speaker and former golf professional from Sweden. Her story of surviving a natural disaster, cancer, losing her leg and making an incredible comeback is a great example of our potential to grow through challenges. Caroline has been featured in Forbes, The Times and ESPN and spoken to Global Business. She inspires you to grow through challenges by sharing unique strategies of building a strong mental muscle and becoming resilient and how to get the most out of your life. I know you will enjoy today's episode. Let's get started. Caroline, I'm so happy to have you here. It's such an honor to get you on my podcast and hear what you have to share with my audience. And yeah, let's just jump right in. I mean, you know, it's all about energy and how people can have more energy in their lives. So my first question is, how do you help your clients to have more energy in your life? What, what do you do with them? What, what have you experienced so far? Yeah, so first of all, thank you, Linda, for having me. I'm so happy to yes. be on your show. It's going to be so much fun. So how I help my clients to have more energy is truly to work a lot with their mindset and their focus, because I believe there are two aspects of energy. And one is basically emotional and like your mindset part, and one is physical. Mm. So if yeah. I move back a bit, you know, to when I was playing golf professionally, it was so important that I really kept to a good routine and that I was able to manage my emotions. Those two were like, you know, the two key parts for keeping my energy up over a long time and also over like tough periods when you're not feeling that great and so on. So I work with my clients to manage their focus. Because if I would ask you right now to look around in the room hmm. and point out, for example, green details, mm -hmm. and yeah. you would do so for 10 seconds, and then I'd ask you to close your eyes, and then I would like to know where in the room are the red details. You maybe would be able to tell me this. <laughs> Because I know my room, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you know your room. Like maybe you know it so well that you know all the details. But actually, surprisingly, a lot of people, even knowing their room is really good, when they get into this competition mode, you know, of focusing really hard on one thing, the brain has to filter out all the rest because it's not important where the red details are. And that's kind of how I try to explain how strong our focus can be when we set our mind on something. But it's also, of course, in the other way, if we get stuck in obstacles, you know, like yeah. how we only see the obstacles, but we don't see the opportunities ah. around us. Yes. Now, now, now I've got it. It's, about, it's it. about the focus. Yeah. And you were talking about the two, the emotional energy and the physical energy. And do yeah. you concentrate more on one of them when you work with your clients or is it always changing or is it a mix? How can I understand that more? So when we're working, we're focused mostly on the mindset, on the emotional part, because that's usually the exercises that you are not aware about. But you may be aware about that when you jump up and down or you dance to your favorite song or so it's mm. more like a physical kind of energy or when you exercise a lot of people say that 
when I need more energy, I just need to go and run because it clears my head and I feel much better in my body. Yeah. So that's more known to people. And it's always a combination of how you think and focus and how, what, like what you actually do physically. Ah, perfect. Yes, of course. It makes complete sense because we are much more aware of our body and how to move it and how sometimes we're low in energy and then sometimes we're up in energy, but emotionally we, we're not so much, so used to it, right? I mean, we haven't learned that anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't. Um, you know, we haven't learned that maybe some like emotions or so. I mean, you talk about that a lot about like frequencies and how things move and so on. But every emotion has their own kind of wave. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. And like how they move. If I ask a client to explain, for example, like if you feel happiness, like so deep happiness to your core, where is that? feeling in your body and they're like what is that feeling in my body yeah if you find it to be somewhere in your body where would it be and maybe they say the chest or it's exploding everywhere hmm. they could kind of identify how that feeling moves for them so that's really interesting if you compare that to for example okay when I feel down it's another type of energy that maybe sits in my head then I mean it's not always like according to research it's more like the personal experience of every emotion but still recognizing how that actually affects your body and your state at the moment yeah no absolutely yeah so true and when people have worked on this for a while together with you how do their life change what kind of examples can you give us of how people behave differently or or live differently after they have really focused for quite some time on this part I would say that the most common one for my clients is really the satisfaction of being kind of in charge not being a victim for your surrounding or for how you feel because that's also really common that we think you know we're sad and it's valid to be sad. It's totally okay to be sad. But sometimes you can think that because you're sad, you fall victim for that feeling mm. and you cannot change it. Mm. So that's where I see the biggest change and shift for my clients is really, okay, I'm in charge of my experience. I'm in charge of my state. And I can do like, I can be the driver in this car and I don't have to sit in the passenger seat which is like results in a, in a lot of different things. For example, like being more confident at work because mm. you, you know, <laughs> you feel like, okay, I'm in charge. Or uh, one of my clients that I am allowed to talk about, she said, you know, I was always thinking about if I'm going to meet the right person. And she was not having great experiences with dating guys. But after working, working together for, for a while, she turned that if into when I'm going to meet somebody and she had a more, much more positive outlook on life and she was actually daring and having the courage to ask more. Wow. So that was a really cool change. And that is that just a change of one word, but of course behind that word is a huge shift in perspective, right? Yeah, it is. And it's also a perspective in what do I believe, for example, I'm worthy? What kind of fears were there that were blocking me from having this kind of shift in my life? And also, how do I look at myself, my identity as a person being in this process? So it was a huge, like a, a, a transformative change, actually. Amazing. <laughs> that is such a shift. <laughs> I, I, al I already feel like the emotion of just being happy for her. That is just yeah. So powerful. Yeah. yeah really getting into, the, getting into the driver's seat of your own life just sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you think that it is quite difficult for us to, to get there and, and to to really make changes in our lives. I think we, we are all experienced before that we want to make changes and it just doesn't work or we, may, we make maybe changes for a few weeks or maybe even a few months, but then we fall back and, and we are literally where we started. What do you think is, is the reason for that? 
oh, I know this so well for me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. You're on this road and you're starting. And then suddenly you come to a moment like, oh, I do it like before. I think I usually explain it in a way like this, that when the train has been running in a certain way, in a certain path for 20 years, and we suddenly change the, the trail of the train to run in another path, like a train is really heavy. It has a lot of power when it pushes through. So the start can be really powerful, but then suddenly if we don't align ourselves with that future that we want to create, that new change, and truly, 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 truly integrate that in our life, it's really easy that this powerful train just go back into the old trail. And I think that moment comes, you know, when you're high of, of the oxytocin or dopamine or something like the motivation is really high it always drops always oh always God. always it always drops it's like the, the the law of gravity it's also with our motivation it always drops and um, when it drops finding the resources is so important to keep going and i believe this is somewhere where a lot of people then get stuck because it drops and we maybe see the obstacles. We are faced with our beliefs about that, oh, this is trickier than I thought, or this is harder than I expected when I started because I was so full of energy. And now I'm not anymore. And you kind of gaze back to where you came from. <laughs> and that is more attractive than finding the resources and taking new actions to go for the new one like the new goal or the new chain because it's unknown yeah you know yeah absolutely I can literally feel it <laughs> being at that point where you go no <laughs> yeah. and, you, and you were talking about then finding the resources so may, maybe on your example you you said you you know what I'm talking about what kind of resources are you then looking for in yourself what what can you do to to get it back up again or to move the train again in the direction of where you want to go it's a little bit like flipping the pancake like if life is not happening to you but for you what's the gift right now and i know that this could be a very like provocative question when you feel like everything is going against you you have so much resistance and there are so much obstacles and you should ask yourself that question but I asked myself that question when I was going to amputate my leg actually because I had I was diagnosed with cancer in my knee and I had three weeks to prepare for the surgery basically I was on the bottom I was having so many doubts about where I was going what I was doing, what life was going to be like to live life now on one leg and, uh, you know, getting healthy and all of those th things. But it came to a moment when I had to ask myself these hard questions like, OK, Caroline, but if this is an opportunity for growth, how weird that might sound. Or if Caroline, if this is something like a chance to grow in a certain direction. What can that be? And I was flipping that pancake and started to see, okay, actually, I'm going to end up having half price foot care. <laughs> and, wow. You know, what? <laughs> you know that what? is that is positive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, you know, I always go to the gym and I train my arms, but hopping around on crutches, I don't need to train my arms anymore because I would get it daily. And it was like flipping the perspective to see my resources and what I had and the people that I had. You could like, I couldn't do this alone, of course, but to see, okay, I'm not alone. I have the people, I have like roof over my head, like all the basic stuff. I can put food on my, on my plate. I can put clothes on my body, like by myself. Really, I had to go to all of those kind of levels to see everything I had. And I realized, wow, I'm so rich right now. 
and that lifts me up to tackle that obstacle that is in front of me. So what can I do with all of those resources that I have? What is the first step that I want to do? Oh, I want to prepare for this change. I want to reach out to these people. Or actually, I'm missing somebody in my life that could give me this perspective, for example. And I reached out to that person. And then I was directly, you know, steering my train into the track that I wanted to go. And I did not gaze back and, you know, put the blanket over my head and just said, you know, I'm not going to deal with this. Yeah. So it, it is like a moment of like facing those hard questions. But the thing is, when you're in it, I'm so convinced you can do it. That is so inspiring. That is amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> that is just, that is just so powerful and I hope to our listeners that they can really take in well take even an example of you that is amazing and but what I heard you say is that you you asked yourself these hard questions and I think that's probably a very tough thing to do and then you took quite a few actions right you you came kind of into action and would you say that the mix of that made you be able to get get out of that out of the feelings of what normally people would feel when they were told that they will lose a leg like or is there something else that people should be doing or is it really this have the willingness to ask these questions and then go into actions what do you think i really think it's a combination of that because the shift happened first in my head I mean, I'm all about mindset and, you know, like speaking about energy in your podcast right now, it's the combination of that emotional management and the physical energy. So right. taking action became for me, you know, like the best kind of result or progress from what happened in my head. Mm. And then together made me feel more confident, even though to an external eye, you would say, oh, Caroline, you are in a shitty position right now. And I would 100% agree with that. But somehow with that combination, I found that confidence. Yeah. So taking the, taking the next steps, not just stay in our head, in our emotions, but actually putting as well the first few steps in front of it and actions in the real world in our body can yeah. actually help us as well to, to get moving and to probably see as well some early results, some quick wins, right? That, yeah. that inspire us to keep going. And it doesn't need to be hard things. It can be really easy things, just like you say, quick wins, because these are the best when you start to take action. Don't make it too hard. Like start to take action and make quick wins that you can already cross it out on your to-do list if you like to-do list in the morning. <laughs> or like uh, anything else that makes you feel like this was a great quick win and I made progress because progress is so linked to satisfaction happiness joy that we are like constantly evolving because as yeah. human beings where we are always right yeah absolutely yeah do you have any little tools something like affirmations or yeah, anything else that you use in your day, in your in your uh, while you're working, but as well in your private life to to keep your energy up and and to have your you know positive emotions. Do you do anything? I really like affirmations. I truly do, and I usually change them like from time to time depending on how I feel. But one sentence that is for me like so deep also connected to the time when I was going through these changes is fearless live more. It's so simple. It's maybe cheesy, <laughs> but it, <laughs> it tells me. <laughs> and I find it funny that now I'm married more. So I always put the more like fearless live more. Okay. Continue living life to the fullest, the way you want to live it. It's very like deep for me. And I have it like on, on my desk at home. I have that fearless live more. So, you know, when you see it a lot, you're like there. And I guess that helps me keep my energy or at least it's like a reminder first in my head and then I do something. 
like mm-hmm. physically that mm-hmm. brings the energy do you have something uh, i keep changing as well to be honest i i do feel that if something resonates with me then i do use it for a few yeah probably weeks and then it's kind of a little bit like it's ingrained it moved into my dna and i don't have to keep saying it again but i think if i have to say one that is really stuck with me is live life a bit more easily so live with more ease i think that has been really important in my life not just working hard and delivering hard and overachieving but trying to enjoy life as well and have a bit more ease in your life yeah that is really good so powerful and, yes and you you were saying about fear less i love that so i want to talk about a bit more about fears how how do we fear less because we come a we come against a lot of fears in our life i think sometimes we know and sometimes we don't even know they're just there mm-hmm. but minimum when we know what can we do about a fear that we have i usually believe that a fear is usually much worse in my head than it is actually in real life mm. and i think a lot of us are very is an educated guess just but a lot of us are very quick in judging something like a situation or prejudging how something is going to go and maybe thinking oh this is not going to work out so well and we build up this fantasy that becomes an obstacle so i guess really it's so important when it comes to mindset and managing not only our emotions but also our thoughts to not let them run wild like wild horses on a on a field you know mm. because they go crazy wild horses on a field with like they're having a lot of fun they're just running and if you're trying to manage your thoughts at the same time that you're letting them loose and go all over the place it's really really hard that would be my answer to how we can fear less is basically not putting these scenarios up but try first mm. yeah. yeah because our our fears kind of they start to come into existence through our thoughts thoughts right yeah. because we we keep thinking about it and that's how we give it energy again and like you said with running wild <laughs> if we just yeah, let them keep having their fun on the field we're not getting anywhere and we can't overcome them or let go of them yeah i love no. that yeah really and it's also i believe probably we are a little bit primed as well to think that something bad is going to happen when something is good like you watch this typical hollywood movie of a family that drives in a car together there is a there there are two parents two kids and they're all happy and they're just driving and you think like no i can't be that good like they're probably going to end up in an in an accident or something's going to happen or their house is going to be robbed me while they're gone and that's the way it is. it happens in the movie so i guess we're also a little bit pr- primed of mm. that when things are going too well or going good that there must be something wrong and i think that without being an expert in your in brain i mean the monkey mind and <laughs> like <laughs> your our primer like this part of our brains that is constantly seeking for the tiger around the corner yeah that part of our brain is so old and it should not just run our life and i think that's where a lot of fear comes from as well yeah i completely agree i just read a i'm just reading a book where this monkey brain is called the the roommate <laughs> the roommate that is just keep chatting onto you <laughs> and you try to get away from it so i love that yeah reading different books right this this monkey brain it always keeps having different names but it's so important for us to learn how to how to see it as what it is and it's yeah. not us it and it shouldn't control us we should use it as a as a tool yeah i mm-hmm. love that we talked a lot about mindset and you're for sure a specialist in that 
who inspires you? Who do you go to to still keep evolving as well yourself and, and bringing as well new perspective to your clients? So this is also a little bit like with the affirmations. This is also changing because I'm constantly on the go for new information, of course. But there are some people that I always go back to. And I love the work of Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. And also Joe Dispenza. I mean, in the energy world, that's yes. like a given. <laughs> <laughs> and also I get inspired by my clients as well. Because I don't see it just as a one-way street. I always try to keep my senses open when I work with them. And as much as I guide them or help them through exercises and work with them, they also guide me in a way that they help me to see different perspectives, which is really, really cool when I realize that they are going through a special phase in their life and with a completely different perspective that I maybe knew but I didn't discover so much before so this is something that is really really inspiring but for the new kind of material definitely Tony Robbins I love Oprah as well yes as a, as a source for like a lot of knowledge yeah she's very inspirational yeah she, she has so much experience and and I love that she shares it all and very very openly as well yeah yeah truly yeah but also constantly listening to books and podcasts and yes. your podcast <laughs> <laughs> yes I love it like these airpods I love them because it makes it able to like you can do the dishes go out walking and just yeah. like learn things I love that yes I totally agree yeah. Okay. So before we come to the end, I wanted to ask you something. If I ask you to contribute to a book that is about how to raise your energy for a more joyful life, let's think that's the title. Yeah. And you as an expert and a specialist, I ask you to give one statement or one wisdom that should be in that book that you want to give to, to the world about what they can do or what they should be knowing about energy and how to have a more joyful life? What would that one thing be? Ooh, I already see this book coming alive. <laughs> <laughs> Linda. <laughs> so definitely, like something based on what we have been talking about as well, I would say, that managing your state is your energy to life. Like the statement and yes. then describe that more on how you manage your state to get more energy in your life. And for people who read that statement for the first time, how would you describe state? What, what does that mean? What does it entail? Yeah, so state is basically the result of your thoughts your emotions and your body language so to say it in a more, more easy way then I think it makes complete manage, sense yeah it makes yeah. complete sense yeah when it's you hard. describe it I, I guess it's just for some people they might not think yes because what the state, state is yeah exactly because state is such a word that you don't use so often but it's hard to replace state because it's not really your behavior uh state is a result of yeah, how you feel, how you think, and how like your body language. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Mm. That is so powerful. Thank you so much for it. You're Great. Welcome. And so first of all, I want to say thank you so much, Caroline. I'm so grateful for you to have you as a friend and yeah. as, a, as a partner in the game of, of helping people, speaking to you and catching up with you. And thank you so much for being on the podcast with us and share your stories and your knowledge and your expertise. That is just so amazing. So I want to give as well my listeners a chance to find you so and yes. to learn more about you and maybe even to work with you. So how can they find you? Yes, they can find me easily on Instagram, Caro Spirit. So Caroline Moore works as well, but Caro Spirit. Caro and Spirit. I guess, yeah, I guess that's the easiest way. And also, Nick, let's see, what day is it? First of September, 
Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then my webinar is coming up again. I do a masterclass, a live masterclass for free. So this is something that your listeners can also sign up for. And they find that link in my bio on Instagram. Oh, perfect. So on, we, will, yes. we will make sure to have it in the show notes as well for people to see. Oh, and can you let yeah, us know what, what is the topic of the webinar? Like, what are you going to do in there? <laughs> yes, of course. So mind-blowing, it's about mindset. <laughs> so how to turn doubt into confidence. So with three simple mindset tricks. So you learn how to use powerful words to turn obstacles into possibilities. You learn how to feel more confident and win over your inner critic. Oh, perfect. So check yes. Caroline out on Instagram, Carol Spirit, or go as well to her link in the bio. And uh, yeah, sign up for the webinar if you yeah. want to turn doubt into confidence. How exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And thank you so much too, Linda, for having me. I'm so grateful. And for our friendship as well. It's amazing. Thank you so much, Caroline, and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you guys for listening, and I will speak to you all soon. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. You can find all links and information on Caroline Moore in the show notes. If you know somebody who could benefit from this episode, please share it with them. Send them a link to this episode. And please subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss the next episode. And leave a review if you enjoyed it. And with that, I love you and leave you. Talk soon and bye-bye.